Yeah, man. So, I don't know where these little people come from. Most of the time, um, they don't really have a name. This is like, I don't know what this little new guy is that popped up out of nowhere. He's watching, um, he's watching some of my most popular videos um, and saying stuff like, um, I'm a sad, lonely, uh, pathetic person or something, and there's no proof in nothing or nothing. Man, come on, man. I, I've spread the most truth of anyone on earth about remote neural monitoring and targeted individuals and EMF broadcasts and gang stalking. All of it, artificial telepathy. I've spread more truth than anyone on earth about it. I told everybody how to record it. I've got more recordings put out than anybody with millions of plays, okay? I got almost a thousand videos on YouTube, and um, despite uh, these gang stalkers deleting my people, uh, my subscribers off of YouTube, my followers on Facebook, my followers on uh, SoundCloud, my followers on Instagram, everything, everything, they delete 500 followers a day. Why the hell you think they do that? The same reason you on here trying to say that I'm lonely and, and, and I'm not telling uh, any proof for truth or whatever you're talking about. You don't even say your real name. You're just a gang stalker. Get off the mind control. Get off the broadcast rape machine. Stop raping your nieces and your, and your uh, little sister or whatever the hell it is you're doing that you're so trying to protect from this evil scheme of EMF broadcast. You know what? I'm not, I'm not going to go that far and say that EMF broadcast is evil because I'm sure that everyone doing this isn't evil. What the question is, is why haven't, um, why haven't the people that know about it done anything to try to stop it? Why haven't these millionaire athletes that give to foundations and all of this bullshit, why aren't they doing anything to try to stop um, Satan's plan? of remote neural monitoring and gang stalking. Why aren't they doing anything? Why aren't these billionaires doing anything about it? They know about it. They know about it. They have theirs. So do all the athletes and so do all the uh, movie stars and uh, uh, musicians and millions of other people have their neural monitoring. But why aren't they saying anything? Or why aren't they helping people that are targeted? They're probably using remote neural monitoring. They're probably using it on somebody that probably at least watches somebody. Now everybody's not gang stalkers and I can't say I wouldn't want to watch a few people. Maybe I would, but um, I, you know, I don't hurt people. And I think remote neural monitoring is, um, you know, neural monitoring is a very cool technology and it's the most advanced technology in the world. And um, for this to be leaked out for, for street level little gang stalker idiots to follow a, a to, to play out the inevitable of the uh, billionaire scheme, it's, it's ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. That music you hear, that music you hear, Three Houses Down For Me, is from uh, some gang stalkers. I should be hanging out over there with them, listening to some music, right? I should be. But instead, they're lost on mind control. They're lost on mind control with their, their mother is lost on mind control or their stepmom or whatever. And my ex-girlfriend used to hang out over there and pretend like uh, she would broadcast and pretend like she was being held hostage and being raped. And I actually called the police over there a couple of times, um, you know, and she would hang out over there. She also hung out at, uh, she also hung out at a couple places, um, around here. Um, and in my neighborhood and they would do that That's, and she's got all these uh, kids in my neighborhood on neural monitoring and gave it all to them and they all became gang stalkers and joined their little crew or whatever uh, some of them when they were like 10 or 12 years old now they're like 14 15 years old and they're, they're gang stalkers they're all broadcasting um, so I don't understand why all these people don't um, I don't understand why these people do that um, and they don't say anything uh, I don't understand why these famous people don't say anything but anyway um, you know Marcus um, over here on Howard Circle right behind me Marcus is the most obsessed person in the world okay um, for two years non-stop all day every day 24 7 he's been on my channel he assaults me nonstop with little waves every day, all day. Um, that's his life. I'm his life. He lays there on a broadcast machine worried about me and Emily and Kimberly. Okay, and they're two gang stalker girls and they're at Antoine's house, Antoine Davis. They're at his house. Um, and let me tell you what, okay, um, 
for a long time I didn't know these people his name full names okay they've been on my channel i know him very well through telepathy and broadcast um i know marcus last name somewhere i have it on a screenshot where i screenshotted his facebook i know how he looks from broadcast um i don't remember that i've got a hundred thousand pictures to look through so i haven't found it but i'm i'm gonna eventually uh, uncover his full name for everybody okay marcus and he's emily godwin's uncle Okay, and so is Cogswell, and I never have known his real name. That's Marcus's older brother, that's like 57 or 58. Marcus is 52, and then his buddy Ricky Patton uh, moved in with him, and he's 52. Um, so, um, Marcus, he's the most obsessed. Oh, that's what I was saying, uh, how, how I know these people's names, because um, I found their, uh, on, on their little, one of their little gang stalker sites, I found their flyers. Uh, what it is like um, it's like there's pictures and um, it's supposed to be different resolutions of the same picture but each one is a little different because it's each gang stalker that's on your neural monitoring so if you find yours then all the different resolutions of that picture will be all the different gang stalkers that are on your neural monitoring so if you look at it like you got to look at it funny. It's supposed to be meant for a broadcast to look at it. It's an EMF picture. So if you look at it real funny, then uh, you could kind of start to read it, okay? And that's how I know Antoine Davis. Um, and that's how I know Emily Godwin. Because she used to say her name was uh, Emily McAwaney, okay? And that's that's just another guy that's got Bobby that was Bobby McAwaney that I'm not I'm not totally sure that he's a gang stalker, but I'm pretty sure he's got his neural monitoring. I've seen him broadcast, but they... He dated the same girl that put me on remote, and uh, she probably gave it to him um, because his neighbor, this guy CJ, um, definitely has his um, because he, him and this girl Angie Kissinger and, uh, and his girlfriend Paige, they had this little plot to kill me when, um, when I went to uh, this casino with them because I like to infiltrate these gang soccer crews. So they had this little plot to kill me and they were all broadcasting and uh, they've been on my channel plenty of times. So I know CJ had his and he was Bobby's neighbor. So I'm pretty sure Bobby had his and Bobby used to date the same girl that put me on remote. Um, so she probably gave it to him and she or he probably gave it to CJ. I'm sure CJ probably gave it to his girlfriend Paige and um, you know, and they're all gang stalkers. It's, I'm pretty sure that Bobby is. I don't know. I don't know. He's never gang stalked me, but I've seen him broadcast. Um, then there's Amanda Godwin, um, Robert Lackey. Um, there's a bunch of them, okay? But the reason Emily used to say she was Bobby's little sister, Emily McAwaney. But when I finally uh, decoded the, the little flyer, it was Emily Godwin, okay? And then... Um, they, she started uh, broadcasting with her daughter Anna, and um, one day I seen the the uh, the little broadcast and advertisement when she had Travis Travis Hill. Okay, he's he was a friend of mine that um, hit me up and asked me. Uh, he was like, because he was messing with the same girl that put me on remote neural monitoring, and she was he's like, I think she got me, man. I think she put me on remote. So I got all the messages saved, and um, I told him about everything, how it works, and they said, you know, they gave it to him. Okay, so um, he became a gang stalker with them. All right, and he came to my house uh, before I knew they gave it to him, and we were talking about it or whatever, but then he was in my bathroom, caught him in my bathroom with a mind control, um, and uh, he was in there. And if you're on a mind control, you can broadcast and control your broadcast within close range, okay? You don't have to be on the broadcast machine unless it's like a distance, and then you got like maybe a less than a mile still. Um, but... He was on the broadcast. He was on the mind control, not a broadcast, but he was in there broadcasting um, because he was close range into my in my bathroom with Emily Gowan uh, doing a virtual thing. It was like a gang stalk because he's at my house, so uh, they want to do a live stream of him because it, you know Emily was the girl that I had a big crush on for a while. So um, she's not my ex girlfriend that put me on it. And I got another girl that's in their crew that I have a child with, and I won't say nothing about her because. Um, because I have a child with her, and that's the only reason she's not on blast all day, every day, like the rest of them. Um, so, anyway, Emily and Travis were broadcasting, and she had the neuro, all these neural monitoring uh, links and stuff, and and the little profiles laid out, uh, EMF broadcasted on my floor. Okay, and that's how I seen Anna's. Uh, that her name was Anna Godwin. 
um, and that's and supposed to be Emily's daughter, I guess, and supposedly she's 14 years old, uh, but I've seen her broadcasted several times and we haven't talked much, and, but that's the only way I know her at all. Um, it's through about three or four different times when she was broadcasted and I know that's, um, or I know that's what the last name said on the broadcast, Anna Godwin. Um, Kimberly Altawell or Atwell, these, these little things that I'm talking about, they're very difficult to read. I posted them on Facebook and I've posted them in my uh, uh, telepathic gang stalkers group or what is it gang telepathic gang stalkers something like that on Facebook I got several groups and like 20 pages and several Facebooks and four Instagrams and the YouTubes a couple YouTube channels and all kinds of stuff so um, you know I'm doing more I got 58 sound clouds I'm doing more than anybody's ever done and I'm putting out real proof and real evidence and talking about it and telling everybody the real truth about what's really going on but that's how I know a lot of these people's full names is from those flyers. Um, you know, my ex-girlfriend, who we got a little court thing, and I can't mention her right now, uh, but that's that's coming up uh, real soon. And uh, then I'm going to put her on blast again um, because she can't do shit about it because it's true as she knows it. Um, so she's not going to say a damn thing about it. Um, all this is going to come blow up in their face is what's going to happen. But... Um, I knew her before, I knew Black James before, but I never knew his last name. I think his name is James Roberts or Robertson, um, and I've posted pictures of him. I knew him through her before. Ashley Ramirez, I knew her before they started gangs talking me through her. She had me on since 1997, but um, but I, I didn't know it, and I was actually seeing her again because I was seeing her back, in, back then, and then I was seeing her again, and uh, I seen her again a little while in 06, and I seen her again uh started again at 13 2013 and then in 14 they started gang stalking me a little bit and then in, like i didn't understand it and then in 15 i started understanding it and that's when they turn on telepathic and full-blown gang stalking and they just went bananas so um that's uh, some kind of chasing my mouth um so that's how I know a lot of these people, but I knew a few of them before. I knew Robert Lackey before. He was like the leader of their crew. He's supposed to have been supposed to have been the leader of their crew, but now the crew is divided. So it's like a black crew and a white crew. Is they these all these uh, children, all these twelve year olds that they put on started to grow up and be 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, and they're they're um, started their own crew with Antoine Davis. So it's like the black crew. They don't they don't uh, do nothing with the the white people that used to be in our crew except for the girls uh, Emily and Kimberly Altawell it's Altawell or Atwell because they're hard to read these things are hard, very difficult to read um, I, I think it was Altawell but sometimes they say Atwell I don't know um, Kimberly I know it's Kimberly okay then there's uh, another girl named uh, I think her name's Kimberly but they call her Emma or maybe her name's Emma and they just try to confuse me I don't know and then Cogswell uh, Marcus older brother this 58 year old one he's got a girlfriend or a wife that's supposed to be named Kimberly too so there's several Kimberly's and um, you know there's there's uh, there's a lot of people I could name 20 or 30 more people but those are all the main players uh, that live right around me and, and do this thing Antoine's got a 14 year old little brother that's very involved um, and Emily's supposedly in love with him and she's like 30 something um, and they broadcast every day all day she's over there with Antoine her and Kimberly are over there and my ex goes over there too on the weekends but Kimberly and Emily uh you know, they all live right around here, but they pretty much haven't left Antoine's house for months. And that's what Marcus throws his little fits about. Um, he's obsessed with them and he's obsessed with me. And uh, I think they kind of like me. And that's why all the guys just keep them on mind control and broadcast all the time. They're scared they're going to give it to me. But, um, you know, I don't want them anyway. But um, they're over there at Antoine's house. And, and there's a, probably uh, about 10 guys that are there commonly, like most of the time. And... Um, I think probably seven or eight of them are uh, 17 to 13 years old in that range. Um, and that and these girls are like, I think Kimberly's like 27 and Emily's like 31 or something like that. And then my ex that put me on this is like 39 or something like that. So uh, she's she's a good bit older than me. So, um, you know, that's, that's what's going on. But um, I don't know why I was, this Marcus is so obsessed. Uh, I was going to talk about that, but I talk about that all the time. Guy Smiley, the gang stalker. I call him Guy Smiley because the way he tries to 
pop up with a little announcements all the time. Like when I'm thinking, he'll say my thoughts like some kind of announcement, like he's like he's doing a talking head news show, and uh, it's very guy smiley ish. So I started calling him Guy Smiley, and Coswell wants to steal the Guy Smiley uh, gang stalker name because he says it's a famous gang stalker name. So he tried to pretend like he was Guy Smiley for a while, but I know the difference. I mean, their personalities are different. He sounds more like a, a more like a gay clown with a little high pitched voice or something like that. It's really retarded. He's fifty eight or seven and a half. He likes to say I'm fifty seven and a half. So anyway, so um, you know they live right back there, right back there across that street. You know, on the other side of that street. Um, that's how our circle. So uh, that's how close they are. Close enough to get on my Wi-Fi. And then Antoine, uh, Emily, and Kimberly are all right over there. Uh, right right over there on another street. And they're close enough to get on my Wi-Fi. And they have all been on my Wi-Fi for two or three years at least. So, um, you know, that's what they do. They do live streams. And um, they use Facebook apps and, and um Instagram apps and WhatsApp apps, and uh, they use Android Studio to make these apps, and then they link the neural monitoring to it, and some way you cannot find it anywhere on your account. So Facebook is a very big aid to gang stalking uh, because they don't make it available uh, for normal people that aren't hackers or creating apps or whatever in android studio they don't make that information available for for normal people to see who's made an app and linked it to their account so um facebook is is very guilty uh zook zuckerberg mark zuckerberg is that his name he's very guilty of of concealing this because they know what's going on they know that facebook and instagram and whatsapp and uh facebook developers are the uh, biggest part of gang stalking because that's what they use to live stream so uh mark you got billion dollar lawsuits coming your way i promise because you haven't made this information available i've contacted facebook 20 times about them deleting my followers and doing this to to me with little apps and stuff like that and as soon as i try to learn about it you know marcus is all over my damn devices him and ricky and emily they've crashed so many devices of mine because they get on every device i have um and uh you know if you're on remote normal monitoring it's hard to stop them so um you know they've crashed so many devices and it's very expensive to you know to to buy new laptops and i got i got a pile of laptops i can't use um you know i got another pile that i'm afraid to put online because I don't want them to have it so um, you know then I got a pile of bricked phones and I got an iPad with their virtual device hosted right on it and I can't I can, if I try to do anything with it they just wreck my shit and destroy everything so if I try to learn about this stuff on Android Studio they'll crash my device uh, you got to be on a laptop to do to do that so I started trying to build my own virtual devices and apps in Android Studio because that's what they do they build virtual devices and and apps and then they link the neural monitoring to it and that's and um, you know they'll make like a Facebook app and within the code of that Facebook app they'll write the neural monitoring into it and then um, you know, add settings with the coding um, to where they can like delete followers because there's not a way to delete followers. But I've got solid evidence of them deleting like 500 followers a day off Instagram and they've deleted like 10,000 people off of my Facebook accounts. And all of these people ain't following me because I'm cute or something. Like, look, I ain't even shaved in like in like four days or something. It's ridiculous, right? I just go to work at the at the UPS. <laughs> Uh, and it sucks and um, I have to get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning and I go there and um, There's a couple of cute girls work with me though. So anyway uh, My availability is wide open though. That's all I'm saying I like to hang out at the, um, at the Hooters up the street and I talk to all of them girls about 10 of them and uh, They all want to follow my Instagram and want to know about all this crazy stuff and blah because I sit up there all the time and uh, they hot for real, uh, but you know they—I don't know—they ain't came through yet. So my availability is wide open. I've been going to a lot of raves lately. Um, you know, I've always went to a lot of raves for the last 20 years since I was a kid, trying to go to a damn rave. But um, you know, I know a lot of people are there, too. I'm definitely not lonely for that one jackass that was saying that earlier. Uh, I do a lot of things 
and um, I go out every weekend. All right, I got I got some beautiful daughters, and um, you know, I my family's not against me. All right, I got a I got a job. I work with some pretty girls, and I got some friends, and everybody wants to. Uh, you know, talk to me all the time, and and they all think I'm becoming famous, and um, you know, it's it's not gonna be long before something breaks and something happens, because it is. I hold up to this too well. I understand how it all works way too well, and I know all these people, and I can see their broadcast half the time, and it, it's just a disaster for them, and for them to try to hunt, look, Marcus and his brother. They're always like, "You're never getting that remote neural monitor. You're never getting it," because I'm their life. I'm their life, but I promise you, I am going to. I promise you. And these two idiots, and the Ricky too, and Emily. You know, there's about a group of about, probably about eight of them, um, with a subgroup of about 30 more that spend their damn whole day every day trying to make sure I don't get it. I don't even look for it anymore. I'm having too much fun just campaigning against them, um, you know. But the court cases are about to start because I'm about to file a lawsuit about this. Uh, this whole follow, I'm gonna start doing a whole bunch of damn losses. If I can find a lawyer, if you're a lawyer out there, I promise you, I've got more evidence than anybody else in history for remote neural monitoring. I got 200,000 audio recordings. You can hear them very, very well, perfectly, and so many of them. Um, it tells the story sometimes. It tells you exactly what's going on. Um, you know, they're all broadcasting sex to me and everything. I got millions of, I got, not millions, I got, uh, hundreds of thousands of videos and pictures i've been doing this for like three years plus before that you know all my videos and pictures would show it too with the proper editing but once i learned how to do it and then um you know i know what i'm taking pictures of so you know I'll, I'll get the editing techniques down i'm getting better at it every day but um you know the audio i learned how to record it accidentally and then i told the world um and then you know the rest of it it's like i got i got so many i got thousands of screenshots where they're just deleting my people um i've got probably hundreds of log files where they're all over my internet um you know and i've been compiling this stuff i got like six terabytes of stuff and, and on multiple drives um you know so external stuff so they can't get to it um so if you're a lawyer out there um there's gonna be a whole lot of money involved with these lawsuits against um you know entities and and county law enforcement and city law and all kinds of stuff uh, and these individuals and some of these some of these people uh got a lot of money uh the girl that the girl that uh put me on remote uh she's she's got a, a little fame behind her not really um she's not really famous but she's she's uh been involved with some things that make her known before so uh you know, the lawsuits are coming against her, too. Everybody's going to get it. But Marcus and, and his brother are sitting over there like some crackheads. Uh, you know, I believe they shoot meth in their veins and smoke crack, really. I think they do. Um, but I'm not sure. I know they're on this broadcast machine all the time, and they're, I'm their whole life. And they're so worried about me getting my neural monitoring on. What do they plan on doing? I mean, they're like 50-something years old, and they just later on a broadcast machine worry about me 24-7. It's ridiculous.